Good evening, church. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Just want to greet our pastor, our father, our mother, our dad. That is watching us at this point in time. Just want to say, Dad, and Mom, thank you so much for the opportunity that you've given to me. Uh, I'm not taking it for granted. Uh, the shoe is bigger than me, but by your grace, I will stand. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And I also want to thank the pastors for coming out tonight. God bless you, sirs. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And those watching us online, may God bless you in Jesus' name. Without wasting much of our time, I would like us to go straight to the world. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 9. First Timothy. says now faith the Bible says now somebody say now say manje manje faith is now faith is not future faith is not tomorrow but faith is now that is why the Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen faith is the first dimension of the supernatural in order for you to operate in the supernatural, there are three dimensions that you have to attain in order for you to operate in the supernatural. So when you see people that are operating in the supernatural, there are three dimensions that they know that makes them operate in that supernatural. When you see people heal some kinds of sickness, heals the leopard, heals the deaf, there are dimensions they enter before they get to that place. And faith is number one dimension. Anointing 
is number two dimension and the glory is number three dimension to walk in the supernatural. So faith enables us to see into the supernatural. This world that we are living, there are more to this world. If you use your natural eyes, you will not see anything with your natural eyes. But faith is the radar, the antenna to see into the realms of the spirit. When you want to see into the realms of the spirit, you use your faith to navigate it. The word faith in Hebrew chapter 11 here is translated from the Greek word called pistis. P-I-X-T-I-X meaning conviction or firm persuasion. So faith is conviction, what you are convinced of and what you are pers it's a persuasion. As we can see, this definition of faith has nothing to do with presumption. It has nothing to do with optimism. Many of us understand the word presumption. Presumption is something that is accepted to be truth. And at the end, it is not truth. That is not faith. Because faith is not presumption. Faith is not optimism. The factor that assures us that God will act is that he cannot lie. God cannot lie. This is the factor that assures us fail to keep his word. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 29. First Samuel 15, verse 29. It says, And also, the strength of Israel will not lie, nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. God is not a man that he will repent. God is not a man that will tell you he will do something for you and he will change his mind. Men can promise us things but they change their mind. Even our parents sometimes can promise us seven and eight but at the end of the day they change their mind. Friends can promise us things but at the end of the day they change their mind. Listen, if God has said something, you can be rest assured that he would do exactly what he said he would do. This is where people give in. Sometimes we want God to answer us by our own time. But God has his own perfect time. And whenever God answers us, that is the perfect time. And sometimes we lose hope. We lose faith by saying, I've been waiting, but nothing is happening. Faith says, hold on. No matter what it takes, hold on. Because in everything that God says concerning you, there will be a shaking. And shaking does not mean that God is not with you. Situations will arise. It doesn't mean that God is not with you. Even if God sent you somewhere, problems will arise, but he's there with you. That you go through tough times, that you go through lack, that you go through things does not mean that God is not with you. Sometimes he's watching to see whether you are a person of faith or you're just a person of God watches our faith to do things for us. That is why if you see most men that God comes through for, God has seen their hearts sincerely that they believe in him. They held on to him no matter what they saw. They held on to him no matter what happened to them. Sometimes you can cry. Yes, it's good to cry, but hold on to God. He will show up. Now, what is faith? Faith is our response to the mind of God, which is revealed to believers by the Holy Spirit. Faith is our response to the mind of God. When God reveals something to us through the Holy Spirit, now faith is that response to do exactly what has been revealed by the Holy Spirit to us. So faith is our response to the mind of God which is revealed to believers by the Holy Spirit so that we might operate in and exercise dominion over the dimension of time, over the dimension of space, and over the dimensions of matter. You need faith 
to go beyond these three dimensions of creation, which is the dimensions of time, the dimensions of space, and the dimensions of matter. So faith is our response to the heart of God. So faith is the divine ability given to a man to go beyond natural realm. Faith is the ability that God has given every one of us as a believer to go through natural realm, to go through whatever thing that you are going on earth. Well, no matter what you are going through, faith is that ability that makes you overcome the circumstances of this earth. Because situations will arise, trouble will arise, things will happen, unforeseen circumstances will arise. But faith is that radar, faith is that ability for you to go beyond natural realm. That when you see things that is happening in the rest of the natural, your faith is steadfast. Knowing that, yes, there is God. What is faith number two? Faith is a combination of the revelation of the word, the conviction of the heart, and the right declaration, right action, producing the right result. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. I would say it again for those that are writing. Faith is a combination of revelation of the word of God, the conviction of your heart, and the right declaration, what you say, the right action, the steps you take, producing the right results. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. The Bible says, But what says it? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth. It says, And in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. So, when the Holy Spirit reveals something to you through the word of God, now it is your duty to be convinced in the heart that God will do it. And when you are convinced in your heart, it is not up to you to speak. Because faith is speaking. And speaking the right thing. Whatever you speak is what you will get. If you believe that you have received the revelation from the word of God, and you are believing, you have the conviction in your heart that this word is mine. What do you have to do? Now start speaking it. God says you are a big man. Start speaking it. Even if you don't have anything in your pocket, I am a great person. God says you will own this. Even if you don't see yourself owning it, start speaking to yourself, I will own this. God will tell you that I will take you to places. Even if you don't know nobody, start speaking it. Start speaking it. Start declaring it. From declaring it, you are forming things in the realms of the spirit. And when you speak it, now, Faith helps you to take the right direction. Faith helps you to take the right step. Faith helps you to take the right step, which will produce the right result for you. That is what the word of God says. But the, what is, he says, the word is near thee, even in thy mouth. There are people that look at their circumstances to confess their, their life. You don't look at your circumstances. You are seeing the natural you are not seeing the rest of the spirit. There are things that God is doing in the rest of the spirit. But because you are limited, you can't see them. And it is only faith that through speaking it, you will see the manifestation. Even if you are speaking it and it looks like you are mad, keep on speaking it. You are the only person that God showed it to. You are the only person that God spoke to. You don't have to explain to anybody what God said to you. If God says you will make it, you will make it. Don't go around telling people God says, no, keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. Keep believing it. Take the right action. Even if you fail, continue. God will bring it to pass. And I pray for somebody. Whatever God has spoken concerning your life, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. Now having said this, what is the profit of faith? I'm trying to rush up. My time is 8 o'clock, so I have to leave by 8. 
what is the profit of faith? Number one, faith. The profit of faith is the secret of victory in life's battle. First John chapter four, verse four. First John chapter four, verse four. The Bible says, ye are of God, little children, and overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The God in you is greater than the world. Whatever that is troubling you, the God in you is greater than them. No matter the battles of life, no matter the challenges of life, because the battles of life is inevitable. You don't invite battles, but battles come. You don't invite trouble, but trouble come. You see, one time, I was hearing a Christian brother saying, he was just talking ignorantly. He said, I'm happy. I don't have problem with anybody, not even the devil. I called him, I said, my friend, come back here. You are still a baby. My friend, even if you don't look for somebody, somebody will look for you. The Bible says that the devil goes through and fro, looking for who he may devour. You have to look for his trouble before he looks for you. So battles will come in life, but our faith. First John chapter 5, verse 4. First John chapter 5, verse 4. First John 5. He said, For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our world. It is your faith that you will use in overcoming battles of life. No matter the battles that you are going through, spiritually, physically, at work, wherever, just have faith. You overcome that battle. You overcome that battle. Victory shall be yours. And whoever that is going through any battle, in the name of Jesus, I speak grace for victory. I speak grace for victory in the name of Jesus. Life is full of battle, but faith brings the victory. Life is full of battle, I say it again, but faith brings the victory. So faith equals victory. Faith equals victory. When you have faith, you are victorious. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had faith. And they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, even if you throw us inside this fire, if our God will not deliver us, we don't care. We are going. And they entered. And God entered with them. One thing they know is the revelation of the God that they serve. Number one, God is a consuming fire. How can they throw you to who created you? They throw them into God. God who is the consuming fire. They throw them into God. The Bible says that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. They throw them in the lion's den. When the lion saw their elder brother Jesus, they said, fear one. The lion said to fear one, see our elder brother is here. How can we eat these people? So your faith gives you victory in every battle. Number two, what is the profit of faith? The profit of faith is the secret of spiritual power needed for spiritual exploit and result. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 6 verse 8. Faith is the secret of spiritual power needed for spiritual exploit and result. He says in Acts chapter 6 verse 8, and Stephen, full of faith and what? Power. Did great wonders and miracles among the people. So faith does, faith does what? Faith equals power. He says full of faith and power. So in order for you to operate, in the spiritual power needed for spiritual exploit, you need faith and power. Faith equals 
power. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 11. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 11. It says, wherefore also we pray also for you that God would count you worthy of this calling that preached to us on faith on your calling. If you don't have faith on your calling, it will be difficult for somebody to have faith on your calling. Years ago, years ago, my wife told me, this is about 13 years or 12 years. She said, even if nobody believes in your calling, I believe in your calling. Because this is the person that I have spent time with. You know, so when we say we do things, we don't fake what we do. I've lived with her. So she knows my spiritual life. She knows everything concerning me. Listen, I'm not a hypocrite. What I can't do inside, I can't do it outside. So she has taken her time to study the kind of person that I am. And she said to me two things she said that I will never forget it today. So I don't care who don't care, who don't value my calling. I don't care because if the person that I've spent time, years with, can say, if nobody believes in your calling, I believe in your calling. That word has been keeping me. And number two thing she said is that my wife is raised by her father. Her father is a lawyer, was a lawyer, was a military man. My father was a pastor, was a military man as well. So we have the same kind of military reason. So sometimes when people say, I am this and that, it's not me. There is something, the military blood. It's not me, so don't be annoyed. So let me just confess today, <laughs> Pastor Benji. <laughs> so it's the military blood. You see, so she fears nobody just like I fear nobody. But she said to me, two things she fears on earth is number one. Two entities she fears on earth is number one, God. And number two, my prayers. Because she has been with me. That will say, if this thing will be like this, my friend, jump up, jump down, it will be like that. No matter what you do, it will be like that. So these are what has been tested for years that makes her believe in our calling. So the Bible says that, it says, we wherefore also we pray also for you that our God will count you worthy of this calling. Whatever God has called you to do, do it with passion. Whatever God has called you to do, do it like there is no tomorrow. Do it like you're dying today. He, say, he says, and fulfill all the good pleasures of his goodness and the work of faith and what? Power. If you watch most great men like our father, these things were not accomplished by speaking in tongues only. It was not accomplished by whatever. It was accomplished by both faith and power. So in order for you to do great exploits in this kingdom, you need faith. And may God release that faith in Jesus' name. Because this is time for giant strides. In order for you to possess your possession, in order for you to take a greater exploit or do greater exploit, you need faith. Because there are things that will be bigger than you. And if your dream is not bigger than you, it's not from God. Your dream must be bigger than you. For you to know that you can't accomplish this by your own power. I am dreaming this, but this I cannot accomplish without God. But when the dream is bigger than you, don't fear. Then you now know that you cannot do it by yourself. But with God, all things are possible. Number three. What is the profit of faith? Faith brings victory over fear and uncertainty. Faith brings victory over fear and uncertainty. Fear is the norm of the day. People are afraid of, you know, uncertainties. People are just afraid of everything. Job says something. In the book of Job, chapter 3, verse 25. 
Job 3, verse 25. Job said, For the thing which I greatly fear is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. You are afraid. You are trapped what you are afraid of. And fear fears those who fears fear. Yeah. It takes faith for you not to be afraid of fear. And fear, fear those that is not afraid of fear. When you're not afraid of fear, fear fears you. When you have faith, you will be full of power. When you have faith, listen, fear will be far from you. The reason why you are fear, afraid is because you don't have faith. Just grow your faith. Whatever that is making you afraid, you overcome it. Yeah. Whatever that is making you afraid, you overcome it. Can you please give us Mark chapter 4, verse 39 and 40? Mark chapter 4, verse 39 and 40. I have a few minutes to go. Mark chapter 4. It says, And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Verse 4. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? So the absence of faith is the presence of fear. He said to them, why are you so fearful? So if you are not faithful, you will be fearful. In order for you not to be fearful, be faithful. Have faith. Grow your faith. No matter the storm, let your faith stand strong. No matter what you have lost, let your faith stand strong. Listen, it takes God nothing to change somebody's life. It takes God nothing. If God wants to change your life, it doesn't matter who you know. You only know those you know, but God knows those you don't know. And God uses anybody. Whoever that God wants to use, God uses him. Sometimes the people you think that they are the ones that will help you are not the ones that will really help you. What they can only do is to give you bread and butter. But what you need for your destiny, God knows who have it. And you don't know it. So just build your faith that, what, Lord, whatever you said to me and whatever your word says to me, I will believe in you. I will have hope that it will come to pass. Now, number four, what is faith? Or what is the secret? Or the profit of faith? Number four, faith is the secret of possibilities. Mark, or let's start from Matthew chapter 9, verse 26. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Faith is the secret of possibility. Mark, uh, Matthew 19, verse 26 says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is what? Impossible. But with God all things are what? He didn't say some things. Thank you, man of God. He didn't say one thing. He says all, all, all things are possible. Mark 9, 23. So whatever it is that you think you want, it is possible. But sometimes we underlook ourselves because we don't believe that we can do it. Don't look down on yourself. Don't look down on yourself. Don't look at who you are today. Don't look at your surroundings. Look at what is possible with God. Because faith feeds on impossibilities. Mark 9, 23. He says, Jesus said unto them, If thou can believe, what? All things are possible. To him that do what? That believeth. So first you must believe. Faith comes with believing. So when you believe that all things are possible, all things will be possible to you. If you believe that some things will be possible, some things will be possible for you. If you believe that nothing will be possible for you, nothing will be possible for you. Because according to you, so shall it be. Because Jesus says, he says, 
to him that believeth. So first, it is about you. It is an, it's not about who is next you. It is not about who next. No, it's about me and God. If I believe it is possible, it is possible. If me believe that whatever I want from God will be possible, I tell you it will be. So just believe it has to do with your conviction. That's what I said in the earlier, in the earlier that faith is conviction. You must be convinced. If you're not convinced that with God all things are possible, nothing will be possible. This is where sometimes a lot of people miss it. They will say, I've been in church for 12 years. I've been in church for 13 years. I've been in church for 15 years. I've been in church for 5 years. Listen, you don't have hope. You don't have faith. And sometimes people mistaking faith for assumption or presumption. They think they have faith, but they don't have faith. This is the truth. So you must have faith. If you want to grow your faith, start with one thing from God. Just tell God, this is what I want. Give me this water. Listen, take not your focus from this water. Just believe that with God, I will get this water. No matter how long it takes. Because sometimes your faith can be tested. And your faith will be tested. It is not about God. Because God will do what he has said. From what we read from uh, the book of 1 Samuel. The Bible says that God cannot lie. Listen, God cannot lie. God cannot change because of you. He has been in existence before you were born. He will be in existence, existence even if you will die. So it is not because of you that God will change tomorrow. And he has never changed. So when you believe whatever he has done in olden days, like they say, Pastor, they says all truths are what? Are parallel. So whatever that is truth here, is truth also here. So if God has done it in his word for somebody, he can do it for you. Number five. What is the profit of faith? What is the benefit of faith? Number five. Faith is the secret of possessing our possession. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. You can give us in TPT. Hebrews 6, 12. Faith is the secret of possessing our possession. The Bible says... So don't allow your heart to grow dull or lose your what? Enthusiasm. He says, but follow the example of those who fully receive what God has promised because of their what? Eh? Is it weak faith? This is where problem comes with the body of Christ. They have faith today. When there is storm tomorrow, their faith is weakened. You have a strong faith today. When there is a shaking, you say, God have left me or God have left me. Now your faith is weakened. But he said, those who through strong faith, your faith must be strong. In order to walk with God, you must have a strong faith. Because there will come a time in your life where it will look as if God is not with you. But there is a knowing that will tell you that he is with me. Because he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So even if you pray and you fast, you do things, it's like nothing is working. Keep on doing it. He's watching you. Keep on doing. People say, I've gone to church. I've tithed. I sow seed. I do this. I give. I help people. But nothing is happening. Something is happening. It's just that you don't see it. Have strong faith. May God baptize you with strong faith. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Number six, before we pray. What is the profit of faith? Number six. Faith is the secret of escape from danger and disaster. Faith is the secret of escape from danger and disaster. Hebrew chapter 11, verse 34. Hmm. 
Hebrews 11, 34. He says, put out, okay, quench the violence of fire. Escape what? Escape the edge of sword. Out of weakness, they were made strong. Was violent in fight. So there is a place for fighting. One thing with Christians is that they think because you are born again, you don't fight. You know, those days when we were in high school, my father was a pastor and my seatmates, they were just born again. His family, all of them, they were born again. So this guy believed that Christianity is like you'll be walking like this, like a rotating fan. And people will be abusing this guy. So, I was like, Jacob, why are you allowing people to abuse you like this? Say, God will bless them. I said, are you mad or what? This guy, you will look for his trouble. And you will still slap him. He's those kind of people that believe the Bible, that if they slap you this side, turn this side. But that scripture is the other way. He says, turn this side. He didn't say turn your cheek. So there is this other side that you can turn for the person. <laughs> Let me not laugh, my story. So this guy, if you slap him this side, he will foolishly turn this side for you. And they will slap him again. Ah, I'll be looking at this guy. So I was tired of beating people for him. I left him. I said, one day I will correct this your sense for you. One day he made me angry. And I was preparing for that day. You know, as a military person, I went to military training. So one slap. When he provoked me, I knew he would turn that side. I gave him one serious one. To correct his sense. I was waiting for him to turn the other side. The guy refused. I said, my friend, turn this side. He was looking at me. I said, turn that side, Jacob. Turn. I said, brother Victor, God will bless you. I said, shut up. That slap corrected his head. Since then, he didn't allow anybody to slap him. So there is a place for fighting. God says, I have given this land to you, but you must contend. What has been going on from January, the message of that, Pastor KG, Pastor Nobet, you know, grace for, grace and the language of uh, giant strength. Pastor KG preached, uh, the last time he preached, uh, strength for giant. You, you think weakness take? Weakness can't take over. You can't be a weakling and take over. Listen, let me tell you. Let me tell you. The people you are going to contest with, they are strong. See, we shouldn't downplay them. We shouldn't downplay this, the Satan. I am not afraid of Satan, but the truth is that when God casted him down, he never took power from him. So his people still have power. So those guys you see on those top places, they are not ordinary. So you must be fortified in order to take over from them. You see, when we just send people, say, go into the politics without building them, you will die like a chicken. That's the truth. That's the truth. I understand the occultic world. I understand the spiritual realm. Satan is a useless person. From next week now, Friday, I think it's next week, which is Easter, he perverts what Jesus did against him. He always perverts it. Jesus defeated him. But in their secret realm, that is when people disappear. This is the season when people die. People, they steal people to make sacrifice in the rest of the spirit. And what they do is that that people they steal from it. If they want to sacrifice them, what Jesus did to Satan is what Satan will be fooling his disciples that he did to Jesus. Now they will carry the guy, nail him, everything that happens, and crucify him. And his people will be rejoicing that he's got victory over Jesus while he's deceiving them. So there is a place for fighting in your business place, at your workplace, 
Do you think that you are, everybody speaks in tongues with you? Not everybody speaks in tongues like you. Not everybody believes what you believe. One time when I was in Pumalanga, they brought a guy, a father, brought his, 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 he came to me for his son. He says that this guy is working in the hospital. Every time this guy goes to his office, they promoted him. Every time this guy goes to the office, he will be sick. When he goes back home, two days he will be fine. When he returns back to the office, he will be sick again. That's how the guy has been going in and out. Hospitals going from... You see, I looked at the father. I said, where's his son? He said, the guy is here in Joburg. I was in Pumalanga then. I said, okay. Lord, why do, what do I do? And God spoke to me on what to do. I told the father, go and buy me salt from spa. According to direction. I did what I did. I gave to his father. I said, go and give him. On Tuesday, it was on Sunday service after we finished. On Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it was not even his father who called me. It was the guy who called me. He said, I waited these days to see whether what will happen, to, what used to happen to me will happen again. But up to this day, nothing has happened to the eternity. The guy is still working. So that thing you are looking for, you are not the only one looking for it. You think you are good. You know you are good. But the next person, is the person good? I said always that, that you are good does not mean that the next person is good. You only know yourself. You don't know the next person. Even those you think when you are relating with them, they are better people. At night, you don't know who they are. So there is a place for fight. You must fight in prayer. And you must increase your faith. So faith is the secret of escape from danger and disaster. When your faith is active, you are delivered from disaster. You are delivered from whatever they have planned. This is why sometimes when people plan, when people plan, God, through his faith, revealed to us. We were staying in a place where I was praying and the woman said, I am disturbing her and we have to leave because I am praying. You know, one thing with me is that if God take me somewhere, you can't take me out. She did everything she could. No way. One time we went to Middleburg. We were coming back. Because she's got the spare key of the house, she has entered the house and poisoned the food. So when we were about to enter the house, I saw a white substance. The moment I saw white substance in the rest of the spirit, I knew that there was a poison. When I opened the door, my wife said, I'm not going to eat again. I said, don't eat. I will eat it. Let me tell her that power past power. In the name of Jesus, I sanctified this food and I ate it. She did everything she did. We are still alive. But one thing I told her when she wanted to misbehave, I said, this house and the other one, you will lose it. Did she lose it or not? She became like a mad woman. So, there are people you don't play with. Don't think because you are that other side. There are people that are other side. And we are the outside, other side of God. So, faith deliver us. Or helps us. Or is the secret of escape from danger and disaster. The final one before we pray. What is the profit of faith? Faith is the secret of kingdom exploit. Hebrew chapter 11 verse 32 and 34. Faith is the secret of kingdom exploit. He says, and what shall, more, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah of David also, and Samuel and of the prophets, 33, who through faith do what? Subdue kingdoms. Through faith, they subdue kingdoms. They wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stop the mouth of lions. Chai. Quench the violence. Let, let's go. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of sword through their faith. This guy, 
did a great thing for the kingdom. So in order for you to do great exploits in this kingdom, you need faith. Watch men all over the world that you have seen from our father, from this place, what you are seeing. This is a great exploit. It takes faith. This is a great exploit in the kingdom of God. So when we are looking at men who through faith has done exploit for the kingdom, number one person who is our example is our father. With him and others that we've seen on earth today, in order for them to achieve what they achieve, they are men of great faith. Men of great faith do great things. Men of low faith do low things. Men of no faith do no things. So according to your faith is what you will do. Tonight may God baptize us with faith. I pray for somebody here tonight. May God baptize you with faith in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are we blessed tonight? If we are blessed, jump up on your feet and celebrate Jesus. Thank you. We'll pray. But before we pray, somebody will say, how do I build my faith? Number one, the secret to building your faith is to know God. Philippians 3.10, Paul says that I may know him. If you know him, you will know his faith. If you know God, nothing can deceive you. If you know God, you know everything. So strive to know God. Don't strive to know men. Yeah, it's good to know people, but that must not be your priority. Let your priority be seeking God. Let your priority be knowing God. Number two, know the word. Because when Satan attacked Jesus, what did Jesus tell him? He says, it is written. So it takes somebody who knows the word to confront Satan when Satan comes. When Satan comes, if you know the word, you'll be able to tell him, hey, my friend, it is written. But if you don't know the word, you'll be crying like a baby. Spend time with the word and your faith will increase. God bless you. Say, Father, I rebuke every form of attack over my faith. Jesus, let your fire consume every spiritual forces attacking my faith in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. Zebeketo, ikapante lebrosi katwa, jekoto zebrata, iko brante ke panta labrosia, jeko pante lebrosi katwa, mase ke pranto iparata lebrosiata. Every attack, Lord, on our faith tonight, we command those attack to get out, Lord. We rebuke every form of spiritual attack. Over our faith in the name of Jesus, Marse Capatusa, Jacapeta, Ecobanta Toprasa, Esobran Tabeta, Ecoban Tabele Cato, Jaco Parata, Marse Cato Pantecapeta, Jaco Paricatosia, Ecoban Tete, in Jesus' name, say in the name of Jesus, Father, I ask for a fresh baptism of the spirit of faith in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and ask God for a fresh baptism of the spirit of faith. Lift up your voice and pray. Marse ekebarata masopra jeku parikatosia esenta ke parata jokopate intopasiata esepe ekantopa eshalibra jokopate Masekete ke brakete, joko para katosia, elego brande shalega bragade, lego branda zika brata, uka barata tatete pete. In Jesus' name, 
I pray for you tonight. May God baptize you with the spirit of faith. And I take authority on over whatever that is fighting your life. So tonight I command it to live in the name of Jesus. Whatever God has spoken concerning your life, may it come to pass. May it come to pass. You will fulfill your destiny. No one will cut your life short. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over whoever that wants to take your life. May their life go for your life. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name. I don't like to waste time. I walk according to time. I was given by mommy 8 o'clock. And it's 8 o'clock exactly. Please, whatever you are doing, don't fail to be here on Sunday. Dad will be here. Dad is coming back. He's coming back with a fresh grace. He's coming back with a fresh anointing. Invite people. Bring the sick. Bring them. Bring them. Something will happen here on Sunday. Let's put our hands together as we welcome our resident pastor, Pastor KG. Put your hands together as he come and take the offering and closes us. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you heard that message, but if I were you, I would get ready for big things. This is not the season to think, to think small, to do small. Don't do it. Don't do comfortable things. I like what Pastor Victor said. If it's not big, it's not God. If it's convenient, it's not God. So we are pushing for the big things. How many of us are ready for giant strides this year? Amen. As he was, as he was preaching, I, I thought, man, I need to go back to the sermons of the, from the first day of the year. I need to go replay them over and over and over and over again. Why? Because we're in the season of impossibilities. Come on, let's just stretch our hands towards the man of God. He's preached a great sermon. He's delivered from, the, from where God has deposited greatly into his life. Let's just pray that God will add more anointing. God will add more grace. God will add more that he will do exploits for the kingdom of God. Where you are, just release a word. Thank God for his life. Thank God for, for, for Pastor Victor's life. And let's just ask that God will add more grace. And he will do great things for the kingdom of God as Jesus tarries. Father God, we want to thank you for your son and servant, God's servant, Pastor Victor. That Father God, as he ministered on this altar and delivered such a powerful word, oh God, reigniting the faith of your sons and your daughters. That Father God, you will do unto his life, Father God, according to your will and your grace. Father God, we declare. As Jesus tarries, oh God, he will be a ten, he will be ten times greater, hundred times greater, a thousand times greater, oh God, and that he will accomplish exploits for the kingdom in Jesus' mighty name. That as he has stood with our spiritual father and he continues to stand, oh heavenly father, that men will come from the north, from the south, from the east and the west to stand with him, oh God. And Father God, as he has lifted up the hands of Apostle Felix, Lord, you will raise men who will stand with him, oh God. That his deepest desires and greatest prayers will be answered in the name of Jesus. That Father God, you will release a blessing over his wife and over his family family in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ that you will do the great and mighty things in his life oh heavenly father that all his sacrifices all his prayer all his intercession all his fasting oh God will be answered instantly and speedily we thank you heavenly father that your son will do great things for the kingdom while Jesus tarries and it's in Jesus mighty name we have prayed come on let's put our hands together for the Lord amen if you have your offering, let's just lift it up as we give our offerings to the Lord. If you have your tithe and your offerings, let's just pull it out. Let's just pull it out. Banking details are on the screen. And if you'd like to swipe, we have card machines at the door. We've got a lady standing at the door. If you'd like to swipe, you're welcome to just go towards the door, towards the exit, and you're welcome to swipe. Let's just lift up our offerings to the Lord. Father, we want to thank you for these gifts in our hands.
this is not just money in our hands, but Father God, these are what comes from our hearts, O oh Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father God, for a privilege and the honor, Father God, to come before you and present these before you, Heavenly Father. At this moment, we will not just be putting money in our baskets, but we will be releasing from the depths of our heart into yours, O oh Heavenly Father. Therefore, I pray that, Father God, you will bless each and every hand that gives, that each and every single person, Father God, according to what they saw, Heavenly Father, you will do 30, 60, and a hundred times into their lives, oh Heavenly Father. We thank you for the blessing that will follow them, the blessing that makes rich and adds no sorrow. As you extend our worship through the through the act of giving, oh Heavenly Father, let your glory invade the lives of your people and let these offerings, Father God, yield a harvest that no man can stop. We thank you, Father God, and we thank you, Lord Jesus. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Come on, give your offerings rejoicing. are ready for big things in the Lord? How many of us are ready for giant strides? How many of us are ready for those big things that God has promised us? Amen, amen, amen. I'll take this message if I were you and I'll go repeat it. Repeat it. Tomorrow's a public holiday. While you're at home, play this message over and over and over again. You'll find all the messages on YouTube or you can find them on our podcast channels, Apple, Apple uh, Podcasts. Uh, pot, uh, pot beans, Spotify, all of them. Just go check them out and just replay these messages and let them marinate in your spirit. Also, I, if I were you in actual fact, I would encourage you to go past the bookstore and buy something for yourself so that God can recharge your faith as you do big things. My apologies for the announcement earlier on. They had sent me a correction. I did not see it. Please note that on Saturday, Abu Mama, please note this adjustment. On Saturday, it has been forecasted that there will, there will be stormy weather. So for everyone's safety, the uh, treasured women are kindly requested to join the morning prayers from 8 till 10. And thereafter, there will be, you will be moving directly to the youth hall where you'll be having your shake it off challenge. Or sorry, shake it off exercise wellness session with Virgin Active. If you were here last year, what you did in the parking lot, We'll be in the youth hall. Um, please do know that it's not just for exercising, but it's also for fellowship. The program continues. It is fellowship as well as uh, exercising. So it, this will be happening in the youth hall immediately after the morning prayers. Please remember to bring your towel, water bottle, gym mats, and your sisterhood expectation. The dress code is your treasured woman t-shirts and any comfortable attire that you are that you would like to please uh, you'd like to put on. Please be here. All women are encouraged as this will help us take us forward as a church. Amen. How many of us were blessed here tonight? 
How many of us were blessed here tonight? Come on, let's put our hands together one more time for the Lord. Amen. And as we go for the final blessing, let's all stand to our feet. Let's all stand to our feet for the final blessing. Just thank God for just a few seconds. Thank God for this word. The Bible says we'll not just be hearers but doers of this word. But as the word has come, it will activate us to do great things for the word, for the Lord. So where you are, I want you to pray for a few seconds. Lord, as I've received this word, I thank you, Father God, for the faith to follow through every single thing that your word has instructed me to do. That the instruction, the correction, and the rebuke, as well as the edification that has come through the word, oh Heavenly Father, I receive it with humility and meekness, and I will do great things for the Lord. Come on for just 30 seconds. Thank the Lord for his word, and let us pray that God will grant us grace to obey this word in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, even as, we, as we've received this word, oh God, it is not just words that have come into our ears, but Father God, words that has entered our spirit, man. The Bible says, oh Heavenly Father, that the word entered into Ezekiel and the spirit lifted him up on, onto his feet. Heavenly Father, we pray for every single person whose faith is low, whose strength is low, Father God, who's about to give up, that even as this word has entered, oh God, it was not only for the ear and the mind but for the spirit oh heavenly father that you will lift up every single person oh heavenly father and trigger them for giant strides and great exploits we thank you father this evening for this service we thank you father god for all that you have done and are yet to do even as we close the service father god we pray for our spiritual father who is uh, who will be on his way back from tomorrow we pray for journey mercies oh god that he will come back safely and that nothing will happen to him oh heavenly father Father. We thank you, Father God, that as he mounts this podium on Sunday, oh Heavenly Father, the grace for the miraculous, for healing signs, wonders, and the supernatural will flow in this place, and that every life will change and every soul will be saved. We thank you, Father God, that as we leave here, oh Heavenly Father, we are protected safely in your hands, and we will come back here on Saturday morning for greater things that are available in your presence. We thank you, Father, we thank you, Jesus, and we thank you, Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Come on, come on, put your hands together for the Lord. And you may be blessed as you go home.